Nobody knows if you're going to make money. Nobody knows if you're going to become an IFBB pro. If you're going to get 100 girls or 1,000 girls or 25 girls or whatever the fuck it, whatever the thing might be. Nobody knows about any of that shit. But what we do know about is that if you don't try and you don't give it your best, your conscience is always going to keep on eating you up. That's why I put this in here. You just hate yourself. It's like that, that feeling of every day waking up with anxiety, every day waking up purposelessness, every day waking up feeling like a disappointment. Where is that coming from? It's, it's, coming, it's coming from somewhere, right? Like it's not just a chemical something in your brain. Where is that actually coming from? Like there's some fucking crazy patients he's come across. Like there've been guys that bring their wives and they're like, yo, I want you to change her face to look like Katrina Kaif or, you know, some shit like that. Because this guy wasn't taking any action. So this dude is refraining from starting simply because he thinks that somebody else is going to get better results so why should i even try like that's the shit that's stopping him my dad's example is kind of very sad to be extremely honest because the man isn't even giving himself a fucking chance and i don't understand i don't get it like he just won't even start because he already thinks he's gonna fail god hated him he hated himself and when i say god hated him it what i what i actually mean is like you hate yourself your feelings inside of you are negative if you're having just bad days non-stop and you're just feeling bad the entire time and you're kind of feeling like a disappointment either to yourself or you're feeling disappointed by the world or some shit like that it's because we are not doing everything that's within our power to give ourselves the best possible chance that we can give ourselves what if i told you it's not your genetics that's holding you back right it's not your height being five seven five eight five four it's not you being a skinny twig indian ectomorph kid that can never put on muscle and doesn't have the bbc genetics it's not you being in india and therefore earning in indian rupees versus somebody else over here that earns in the usd or something else it's not your genetics or any of these external factors that's actually holding you back now I'm taking time away from like another video, like an hour long video on how to get over approach anxiety once and for all. I'm taking time away from that video to make this one because I've had so many different people ask me the same thing or give me advice or just give me, this has come to me in so many different forms, so many different forms that I think this video is actually going to help you out far more than almost any other educational kind of video that I can make. And you may or may not even like this video when this video starts off. Like, frankly, so when this video ends, you may actually not like it. But if you think that something sounded a little bit interesting or something, just note it down, take it down on a piece of paper or something, and then introspect over it over a day, over another day, three days, maybe a week, and then think and come up with like a different mindset shift or perspective and see if the things that you're trying to go for with that new mindset shift or perspective, if they become far more easier and in becoming far more easier if you don't literally guarantee yourself success so let's try it out okay so your genetics are not what's holding you back okay um the first slide here by the way i'm trying this new thing out about powerpoint presentations let me know how this goes because i think this is going to be way easier than editing a bunch of different videos post or something uh, plus, I can get a bunch of images and come up with my points and everything else. So let me know uh, if you like this method of presentation or something. So if you guys remember, I used to have this video. I still have this video. <clears throat> um, let's find it actually on my channel. It was called Coaching a Black Pill Incel. And the reason why I bring this one up, Black Pill Incel. So if you want to check this out, you definitely want to check out the first one. Coaching a Call with a Black Pill Incel, 1.4 thousand views. That's the one we we're talking about, right? Now, the reason why I bring up this black pill insult call, if you've never heard about this call before, you definitely should. It's it's literally a life changing, game changing call. In this call, I couldn't record the voice of the guy that was on the other side. I could only record my own voice. And I didn't know this until like post processing or something. But what happened here is you hear and how do I know this? Because this guy signed up for me on the same coaching call. This guy signed up for me from the same coaching call. Yeah, here's my mouse. This guy, this guy, this guy, all three of these guys signed up because of this one coaching call. And when we were doing the group coaching calls, which I have videos of me doing the group coaching calls on my channel as well. This guy literally told me, dude, that black pill insult coaching call <clears throat> basically felt like you were actually talking to me. Like you were, it was me coming up with all the excuses in my head and you were coming back with every single response, uh, logical breakdown, analytical breakdown and everything else for every single excuse that I came up with in my own head. 
So this is the reason why I wanted to bring up this call because that black pill insult call was a call that I had with a coaching client who signed up with me and did not start taking action. So that call was about a month in after he signed up and I didn't see him taking any action. Then I called out to him. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Like, why are you not, why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing that? Why are you not making the approaches? Why are you not in the gym? You know, any of any and all of these kinds of different things. And um, this dude came up with like a bunch of different excuses. Let's be extremely honest, man. There were excuses because I come up with the same excuses too. So I could see right through the fucking thing. I can see right through your excuses. So he came up with a bunch of different excuses and I was like, okay, you know, the solution for this, solution for this, solution for this. And um, this part is going to come in again at the end of the call too. But it was basically about like, is it over? Is it all over for you? Like, is it, is this it? Is this done? Like, is your life over? And that's going to come in later on in the video, but check that video out because that's where this came up from, came up from, right? All three of these guys were in the exact same mindset when they heard and or watched this call when that call was happening. This is a dude that's 28 years old, um, white guy, engineer, makes really good money, has bought his own house, has his own car, financially independent, actually a good looking guy, decently uh, in good shape too. He lost a little bit of shape, of course, but was decently in good shape too, but hadn't been with a girl in like five years. He wasn't a virgin. It's not like he's never been with a girl before. He's been with multiple girls in the past before, but he just completely got out of touch and just completely forgot how to speak to women. And, and then over time, just completely started losing faith and trust in himself and eroding his self-esteem and stuff like that. So the reason I chose this screenshot is that feeling that he had can only be explained or um, given to you. What is the transfer or transmuter or something only through the screenshot. And by the way, this dude is this guy. <laughs> uh, this guy is another guy that signed up after. But yeah, so so daily win. I just hooked up with a girl for the first time in five years. Let's go. So that's this guy. This is this guy. Uh, th these are the other guys in my team, right? So I can't explain to you what it feels like when you get out of this mindset and you start taking action for yourself because then the results are inevitable and they're going to come. So that's that guy. This is a guy. Uh, I have screenshots of him too. In fact, I have a whole whole client testimony about this guy recently about how this dude gained 11 pounds, put on 11 plus 100 calories on his um, on his uh, metabolism, um, started talking, got over his fear of approach anxiety and started doing his first couple of approaches. And he made uh, his first thousand bucks in the first three weeks of us start, uh, starting to work together. So this is another one. And you have this guy <clears throat> who started off with an eating disorder in the past. And was really scared about gaining weight and putting on muscle mass and all that kind of stuff. And once he started to trust in the process, we actually have him 53 pounds or 52 pounds higher in the right photo as opposed to the left. And if you can tell, like the V shape is just ridiculous compared to like barely anything or no V shape here. His traps are looking so much better. His arms are looking so much thicker. There's like barely any fat or anything on him in 52 pounds of a natural body transformation. So... And this is a dude that's uh, an otherwise short brown dude who's, you know, who otherwise would have been like, dude, I have fucking horrible genetics when he first started off. So it's not really your genetics. And we're going to get into that. I have another example of this guy, um, Mo. He's a really good friend of mine. He's a really smart guy. Uh, I forget. He has his own startup and he does something in finance and stuff, which I don't exactly remember. He's a, he's a really smart guy. And he's 34, 35. He's like my age or something. And he's really into game too. So like, that's actually how I know this guy. He's into game. And uh, this dude is going out on dates at least one date a week. If not, you know, sometimes two, three times or something. He goes out to the clubs. He goes to go out for night game. I don't know if he does day game that much or something. But, you know, me and him keep talking about game and stuff like that. And he keeps sharing his progress or the dates or what happened here, what happened there and other stuff like that. And... Um, Every single time, and I really like this guy, and every single time that I talk to him, he always is like complaining about something or the other that the girl did in the way that he inferred what happened during that date or something. So one of the previous dates, one of the last days that he was with this girl, he was like, yo, we went out for a date and uh, we only kissed once and then we came back and the date ended or something. And he was complaining because, but, but the complaint that he came up with was, you just know that, you know, if, you, if she was the black guy or like a Chad or Tyrone or something, um, she would have probably gone all the way or something. And I'm like, well, we don't know that. Like, you don't really know that. And, um, the reason I'm bringing this up is dude. Okay. So I know this guy, right? I know this kind of person. He's not looks max. He's not in the best shape or something. And he's not facially completely looks max or anything. So there's a bunch of things there that we can work on as well in order to get him into the best possible shape that he would get the best possible results. But 
even though he's getting good results, like really good enough results, like even one date a week is pretty goddamn good. You have 52 dates by the end of the 52, 56 days by the end of the year. And there's a lot of weeks in the year where you're getting multiple dates or something. So, dude, this guy's going out with way more girls than most any other people are or something. And he's getting laid a lot more or something compared to most other black guys and white guys and shit, too, because most guys are just gigantic fucking pussies that can't even do anything. And this guy's way far beyond all of that kind of stuff. He knows all about sexual escalation. He knows all about game. He knows really good. He knows how about how to build comfort. And he's a really smart guy at the end of the day that the girls really like talking to him. Like they really enjoy spending time with him. But he would just poo-poo on his own results by simply going like, oh, no, you know, I got these results. But I'm sure if it was a black guy or a white guy or some other guy, he would have had these results or something. And he's just giving away his power there or something. Um, I forget why I actually brought up the thumbnail of this video because this was like, uh, I made this video, right? It's a brown man or Indian man dating Indian man, something like that. I forget, I forget what the video is exactly on my channel, but I, I it's kind of one of those same things <laughs> that happens in that video, too, is like, Dude, I'm not getting good enough results because I'm a brown guy, because I'm an Indian man, because I'm this thing versus like versus like white guys in the West or black guys in the West or something like that. And I know this because I'm a brown guy in the West that's doing all this kind of stuff. So I completely see the differences. But but you're taking credit away for all the results and everything else that you're getting. And again, I'm going to explain this as, as things start to keep on happening. Um, this is another friend of mine and this guy is, is short, right? Like I forget exactly how short he is or something like five, seven or something like that. Maybe I'm not sure though. Oh, no, no, wait, was he five, four? Maybe I think he's five, four. Um, so yeah, so this was, so, and then prior to us working together, same thing, right? Like hasn't gone out and made many, if any approaches or something. Um, the approaches that he did, he didn't get good reactions. So he came back and kind of, again, like when we were talking together, it was like, you could tell like the vibe was a little bit like black pill type, a little bit um, toxic type, a little bit like, you know, like anger, like anger towards women and understandably too, because this is, ex this is experience with women. I completely get that. So anger towards women and anger towards the whole game aspect of it, anger towards the whole Western aspect of it, anger towards like, why do they prefer taller guys versus me? Or, you know, just like the previous guy, or if, even if you've heard me complain, like, why do they prefer black guys over white or white guys over brown guys or some shit like that? Right, that kind of a thing. Um, and then when we started working together, this is literally, uh, so I, I actually got a number, LOL. I'm going to go for a coffee, cute girl. And uh, so, yeah, this was the first day, second day. I forget, this is the first couple of days that we were working together. And I told him the goal here is just to go and socialize and enjoy it, not to actually get numbers or anything. Something happens great if, uh, you know, if not, we're still working on being social and everything else. Um, yeah, so gonna go for a coffee, cute girl. And uh, can we get some recognition for exactly how many days we've been working together so far? So, so I think it's been like, I think it was like one week or less than a week or something like that. So again, a dude that was not getting any results and was, you know, in that black belt state or something uh, and, and angry about not getting results or something. And he ended up getting his first number in the first two, three, four days or a week or something that we were working together. So that one there, that one there, that one there. <clears throat> I'm also going to, so here's my example of my dad, right? I love this man. I know this, lo this man loves me, but these are some of the things like when you grow up and you can kind of see some of these things in your parents. And especially if these are things that you're working hard to not be like, or working against or something, because these are things that I've seen all my life or something. So at this point in time, uh, this legend spends pretty much all of his fucking time on WhatsApp which is literally nothing but grief porn, if you guys know what I'm talking about, which is like, because news is nothing but grief porn, right? Like this guy did something to that guy. And right now my dad sent me some fucking videos about uh, some uh, articles about how uh, some bullshit happened with Trudeau in India. And therefore there are like anti-Indian tendencies here and I should be careful and da, da 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 you know, some shit like that. As if like people in the fucking streets really give a shit or people in my gym really give a shit about like, because you know, about some, what happened to Trudeau or some shit. And most people here actually hate Trudeau. So, you know, some, anyway, so he sent me that kind of stuff. And, um, the most important thing here really <clears throat> is that this dude is on the grief porn fucking websites and all that kind of stuff, which is like news websites. And, um, and you know, he's just taking that shit in from all that kind of stuff. And I was like, dad, why don't you just do something productive? Why don't you do, do you have like 50 years or 60 years or something in like surgery, plastic surgery or something. And there are so many interesting stories that you've told me. And there's so many interesting stories that you've told other people. <clears throat> and he really likes to tell stories. Like, I mean, I think that's where I get the storytelling thing from is like my dad really likes to tell stories. So I'm like, dude, 
why don't you just record like put on a camera in front of you and just start talking about the stories and stuff like some of the funniest things you've ever seen in hospitals some of the craziest operations you've ever done some of the craziest operations you've ever heard of some of the craziest patients you've ever come across like there's some fucking crazy patients he's come across like there have been guys that bring their wives and they're like yo i want you to change her uh, face to look like um like um Katrina Kaif or you know some shit like that um and even just weirdest fucking shit he's he's told me some of the in, most insane stories and stuff and he's uh operator operated on these girls that they were like conjoint twins at the head i think uh they, that was a really famous case and they were like a group of 10 surgeons and doctors that worked <clears throat> on them together so he's done some of the craziest shit right and i'm like yo why don't you just share these stories with everybody that's on on the internet because people would love these stories and the man goes no you know because i did it uh, in a way in uh, my surgeries and everything else were of a time where <clears throat> surgeries were done with machine you know without machinery without technology and nobody would want to learn about that kind of stuff or listen <clears throat> to that kind of stuff and da, da 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 i'm like you don't know that like how do you know that he's like no because it's so old school so i'm pretty sure nobody has an interest in it or something something and i'm like dude people have the weirdest youtube channels about the most random shit in the fucking world like like lit- like i wish i could come up with examples but i mean i can only come up with like coin collecting and some weird shit but honestly people have the weirdest youtube channels about the weirdest stuff in the world like don't you think like the entire puri abadi india ki is nothing but indian doctors like i mean don't you think like every indian person being a doctor would really like to listen from you as a really smart doctor who's actually worked for 40 50 60 years about any and all of the wisdom education entertainment humor all of the things that you've actually come across in your life even if your shit was like you know prehistoric or the way that you did it why wouldn't new doctors or something just find it interesting because i would like i i find bodybuilding of the 1930s and 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s interesting right because how did these guys do it like how are most people even now not getting results and these motherfucking indian bodybuilders from the 1930s are getting sickening results like how how is that even happening guys now are on steroids and tran and dnp and these guys had didn't even have food in india and like they're and they're eating vegan food and vegetarian food and they're more jacked than i am like how is this happening i don't understand so these things are always interesting but no he's like no this is not going to happen that's not going to happen so again the point really there is it's 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 not even about oh is the new age not going to want to listen to my stuff because you know my stuff wasn't done with this technology or any any of that kind of stuff like he's just not making videos right he's the one that's doing it or not doing it like a lack of doing it uh as a matter of fact <clears throat> oh okay links so this is my discord link hopefully there should be a link in the description below a hop on we have a community just come and shoot the shit with us this is my instagram ig at the dot intellectual dot muscle if you have any questions go on ahead and you can dm me directly right there uh if you're looking for coaching this is my calendar link again there should be a link in the description box below hop on there fill out your questionnaire for all of your details and what you need help with we'll hop on a uh, coaching call and we can see what we can do So that's the stuff right there. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have random internet advice. Okay, random internet advice. Uh oh, so I asked some guys about yo dude, I've been making you uh Instagram and TikTok videos for like a year now for barely any growth. Like what is what exactly is happening here? Like I can't understand what's happening. So this guy said, "I'll be brutally honest, your videos form part of the most saturated niche there is. Your accent is hard for majority western people to understand." <clears throat> while you are fit there is nothing outstanding and eye catching about your physique to justify retention from aesthetics only from face value people don't like taking dating advice from someone who could be perceived as having trouble in their own dating life uh don't take offense at this one you may have success but to people whose attention span is 5 seconds judgments are made so i'm trying to ask what can i do better like where's where's my hook coming off wrong is my content not right like what is it that i can actually change so you're part of the most saturated niche so i should just change my interest and my niche completely which is ironic because bodybuilding and fitness and even date so i have a niche of mixing dating and bodybuilding right like guys i want to get jacked so that they can build a self esteem self confidence and actually go out there and actually attract the girls that they want nobody is doing that shit like barely anybody is doing that shit most people on this planet are lifting weights and injecting tren and doing growth hormone and insulin and running dnp to get a six pack so that they can actually make some pictures and put it on their fucking dating profiles so i'm actually mixing both of these things up so they can get the best possible results in the shortest possible time in the safest manner so there is no saturation in this niche like if it was only fitness i could understand if it was only dating even then i wouldn't understand to be honest 
So I got to change my interest completely, right? I got to completely change my interest. Okay. Uh, your accent is hard for majority of Western people to understand. First of all, I barely have an accent. And secondly, it's hard for Western people to understand. So that's like what I start taking, like I change my accent now. Like I don't understand. Like that's not something that you can really change per se. While you are fit, there's nothing outstanding and eye-catching about your physique. So, okay, so get even more jacked. Like whatever you have, get even more jacked because that's going to be the thing that's going to be making a difference about the educational content that I'm making. From face value, people don't like taking dating advice from someone who could be perceived as having trouble in their own dating life. So because other people are ignorant, um, the color of your skin is bad. So it's kind of game over, right? So because you're, you're, you're a brown guy talking about dating. Um, and this is the exact same advice that I kind of received from like another white dude who was doing it like a complete bro, dude, like a complete bro. And he's like, dude, I mean, you're brown, bro. Like I'm white. So, you know, it makes sense that people will want to watch me, but you're white. So like, it's like, um, it doesn't, that advice doesn't even help. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like change my skin color now? Like, what am I supposed to do? How is that feedback supposed to help me out? Um, so there's that thing. There was this uh, comment that I've actually shared in another video with you in the past before where this guy asked, hey, listen, I'm actually I'm a doctor and I'm this and this and, you know, uh, um, I'm an Asian guy and I'm not getting any girls to date in Vancouver, BC or something. And this dude actually said, you're not a loser. Women in Vancouver, from my experience, are not interested in dating or hooking up, particularly students. So forget the rest. It's all fucking bullshit. What this man is telling this other dude that's coming to him for advice is that in the entire city of Vancouver, BC, in the West, where dating is like one of the most easiest, simplest hooking up dating, all these kinds of things are some of the most commonplace things in the world. In the West, in Vancouver and BC, not a single woman is interested in dating or hooking up. So what are these women doing? Are they all fucking Fortune 500 CEOs of companies running everything that they never have a time, a single minute in their life to do anything? Like, I mean, what... I don't understand where this is coming from. So again, but these are all examples of things to be blamed, like, like weird shit to be blamed, like weird shit that is to be blamed. Um, so this one, actually, I understand this and, um, I'm not saying this, uh, like, in fact, I understand that this came to me out of love because this guy's actually looking out for me and trying to help me to become better or understand my results or improve my results or something. So this is from one of the YouTube, uh, bodybuilding game, uh, the game, discussion channels, one of the game logs where I was going about my results or maybe the lack of results or just had a hard day or something. And this guy said, bro, why don't you use drugs like trend and client to stay lean and be at six percent body fat while approaching girls also with a shaved face? Wouldn't that make a massive difference in terms of results? So let's not get into the rest of it, but I understand where this comes from, right? Like I understand he's doing it out of love to like help me out. But again, where this comes from is like, dude, you got to be going for trend or client for that look or something because that look is going to help you to get girls as opposed to, um, I'm, I was a 21, 22 percent, I'm still at 21, 22 percent body fat. Obviously getting leaner down to 10, 12 percent is going to make a difference. But then he's going into, why don't you use like drugs like trend and clan or something, right? Like going into like a different thing. Uh, and I think actually, well, he goes into a little bit further, like, you know, Indian guys and brown guys, Asian guys, we put on um, we have bloating and everything else around our, our faces or something like that. Some shit like that. So like trending clan helps us out with that, that kind of stuff. Right. So again, these kinds of things, as opposed to where can I do more game? How can I improve my game? What, what, what are the other things I can do? All that kind of stuff. Right. So now all of these things, you know, where all of these things are kind of coming from every, like all of these things, where they're coming from in that black pill incel coaching call. I remember this guy said, um, dude, all the white guys or the black guys or the Tyrones or something else are getting all the chads and everything else. I forget what the word he used. Um, but all the chads and stuff are getting all the girls. And I'm like, are they literally getting all the girls? Like, I mean, aren't there some girls that are left in your city? By the way, that guy was in Queens in Astoria in New York, which New York is like fucking full of fucking beautiful, gorgeous girls. So I'm like, he's, is he getting all the girls? Like, don't you have some girls that are left for you? He's like, yeah, but like he's getting most of the girls or something. But yeah, but there's still some girls that are left for you, right? Like, why don't you just go for those girls? Like, sure, the Chad Tyrone or whoever else, Andrew Tate or whoever we're talking about is getting a thousand plus girls, right? He has a thousand girls list just fucking running towards him. But what about the remaining girls? Like, why? Like, can you really handle more than five girls at a time? No, nobody can handle. No, I'm telling you from experience, by the way, you can't even handle more Like, you can't even handle three girls at a time. Like, I don't know how people actually do it, but you can't even really handle three girls at a time or some shit. So there's no way that you can actually get like a 10 or a hundred or a thousand and actually be happy with that. So that thing didn't make any sense to me. Like, 
he's putting himself down and he's he's refraining from starting like i mentioned before this coaching call happened because this guy wasn't taking any action so this dude is refraining from starting simply because he thinks that somebody else is going to get better results so why should i even try like that's the shit that's stopping him um so that was that guy so this dude the more dude this dude is already doing better than everybody else but every time he looks or sees something that is that he thinks is like a lack of results or something he like beats himself up and gives credit to somebody else like i'm sure that guy would have done better i'm sure that black dude would have done better i'm sure that white dude would have done better some shit like that but dude you're already doing it you're already crushing it like why do you why does why so anyways okay so that's another thing right um this this short dude that basically we started working together and stuff and he started getting immediate results too and of course i went through so many of these coaching calls where understandably one of the biggest complaints was you know i'm short and all the girls want like six feet tall i'm like bro if you're gonna do online dating six feet is a thing so the goal is not to complain about online dating at six feet the goal is to go out there and let's just talk to girls where you are equal a height or something because all of these girls are open to you right they're all of these girls are definitely definitely open to you by the way he's this same dude has dated a six foot plus tall uh dark black chick in when he was in college uni or something so i'm like what the fuck how did you fucking do that right so we, we got into that we got into that thing after so it's not even just a height thing too because he's definitely you know been with other girls that are much taller than him too so so that was another example my dad's example is kind of very sad to be extremely honest because the man isn't even giving himself a fucking chance like he, i'm like yo dude just put on a goddamn camera and just start recording and just start putting it online plus all of your friends are also retired and are doing nothing if nothing else they, these are the guys that are going to be watching your fucking youtube videos uh, on top of everybody else that already knows you all the thousands of students and everybody else that you've actually taught in colleges and universities and all those kinds of guys as well but the man won't even start because he already thinks because of you know technology coming out and his stuff not being as up to date as, as other stuff his stories are going to be completely pointless and i don't understand i don't get it like he just won't even start because he already thinks he's gonna fail um okay just go again <clears throat> random internet advice uh, so again this is like blaming random other shit and this is like blaming other random other shit um uh, and blaming other random other shit or some shit dude so this is where we come down to the reason why every single one of these guys is complaining including myself by the way i'm not like any special person that isn't feeling these things in fact as a matter of fact because i'm feeling these things and i'm going through something right now that kind of reminded me of this is the reason why i'm taking time to make this video because you don't need to be number one you don't need to be number one i don't need to be number one nobody needs to be number one let's just let's just let that sink in for a little bit because i think even that hurts to like a big extent for some weird reason or something that you you don't need to be number one like and if you're not number one then you're just not good enough or some shit like that and this has been a huge thing in my life because no matter what i do no matter what i touch like i kind of have like the midas touch and that makes me feel like i have to be number one because i'm almost already gifted at most things so i need to be number one else i'm never going to be good enough so you don't need to be number one that's probably the one of the biggest things in the world and the best understanding of these things is like you don't need to be number one you don't need to be this guy you don't need to be nick walker um and the biggest ifbb pro with x million followers or some shit like that you can literally have if you are and i guarantee you you fucking you definitely you're probably like 20 percent body fat 25 percent body fat 30 percent body fat maybe 15 percent body fat you just need to be at 12 percent possibly 10% or possibly see what you look like at 78% if you can get there. You just need to be that. You don't need to be his size. You don't need to be his shredded. You don't need to be anything. If you get down to whatever that best version of you is going to be 10, 12%, 7%, 8%, 9%, whatever it is, looking at yourself in the mirror, you're not going to be thinking, oh my God, I'm not Nick Walker. I'm not number one. You're going to be thinking, dude, I look fucking sick. I can't believe I put eight months into this shit and I actually made this thing happen. I can't believe this is me. Like, are these my fucking biceps? Are, the, are these, Can I actually see vascularity on my arms? Like, is this, is this real life? Like, what is happening? I can't believe I did this. That's what you need, right? You don't need to be at the top of the mountain, the world's mountain or something. You just need to be at the top of the peak of your own fucking mountain. You don't need to be Andrew Tate and you don't need to be banging all these nines and tens or something everywhere else. Or you don't need to be... You don't need to be his this this level guy of something that has all the money and everything else and access to all these clubs and access to all the uh, cars and fancy cars and everything so that he gets all of these girls or something. 
you most of these guys that i'm talking about in the past most of these guys dude so you know most of these guys came to me for to to, to get help with advice right he didn't want look at how happy he is he's not going oh dude i you know uh uh i want to bang like i don't know fucking whoever's like number one i don't know i don't know who's going to be like a 9 10 girl or something this guy this guy this guy all three of these guys got over their approach anxiety all three of these guys started talking to girls all three of these guys started getting numbers and all of these guys including this guy here was was someone that was not getting numbers at first that was that didn't have any confidence to talk to any girls i couldn't talk to any girls it was the same thing none of these guys could talk to any girls so look at where you're at and look at where the results that you you're trying to get at or what you're trying to get you're not trying to be number 1 you're just trying to be better than you that's it um same thing with this guy this dude is crushing it but every single time he fucking takes credit away from himself um this dude was crushing it too like he was doing really well but you know he starts taking credit away from himself my dad could crush it but the man's taking credit away from himself him like himself he's not even making a single fucking video um i don't know how to explain that one but yeah so the you know the women are not into this. dude just go out and start talking to girls we just you're going to get some girls like i mean it's unbelievable so you don't need to be number 1 you don't need to be number 1 in money either like if you're making 2 grand right now or like 1 grand right now all you need to be making next is 3 to 4 grand that's it and then after that maybe 5 to 6 grand maybe 10 grand and you know what by the time you probably reach maybe 10 15 20 grand per month or something you're going to be like dude money just isn't bringing me any more happiness i maybe i just want to stabilize this thing and that's it i'm kind of done i don't want any more money um you don't need to be this guy or anybody else and there's way richer people than him elon musk and everybody else but you know you don't need to be these guys to be the number one and to feel content or some shit you just need to be better than where you're at right now that's it um oops what the fuck happened oh there you go <clears throat> oh no I had other pictures, but I think, I don't know where they went. Okay, so all you need to do is you just need to be the best you. I think I think my whole point here was I was supposed to try and use uh, other pictures of me with dating girls and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, so, you know, you've already seen my pictures of myself and with the other girls that I've been dating and, and uh, about making some money and stuff, right? So all you need to do is just be the best you, right? Now, let me explain to you this part where, where uh, Tate goes on about God hates the lazy, right? And I know exactly what he's talking about. And you feel this, you feel this as well. When he says God hates the lazy. Okay, let me just explain that right there. So God, when God hates the lazy or something, right? If you're going to be any of these guys, like actually, to be extremely honest, let me take my dad's, uh, this thing. Like, I mean, if he's going to be unhappy that people aren't watching his shit, it's because he's not even trying. Like previously, this guy wasn't even trying. I think these are some of the best examples. I think probably this guy's probably the best example. Like, I cannot tell you how depressed this guy was when he first came to me. Like, I cannot tell you how heartbroken and discouraged and like just down in the dumps this dude was when he first came to me, right? And the reason for that was very simple. Like, he forgot how to talk to girls and he just didn't even make the effort anymore. And that's what I had to do. I had to build him up from ground level zero. Like, okay, dude, let's start doing this. Okay, let's go and start talking to girls and sorry, let's go out and start talking to the cashier let's just start asking three four five people for their time okay let's just give them a genuine compliment don't even get a number back just give them a genuine compliment come back home again and blah 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 so when he wasn't doing any of that shit he god hated him he hated himself and when i say god hated him it what i what i actually mean is like you hate yourself and when i see you hate yourself it's like your feelings inside of you are negative like if you're having just bad days non-stop and you're just feeling bad the entire time and you're kind of feeling like a disappointment either to yourself or you're feeling disappointed by the world or some shit like that it's because we are not doing everything that's within our power to give ourselves the best possible chance that we can give ourselves and he wasn't doing it right so when he saw my journey he wanted to take an opportunity and, and give himself the opportunity to do it and this is less than a couple of like look at how happy he looks look at how happy he feels and i have a couple of video uh, i didn't take his videos but like I, you know i have a couple of video recordings of the stuff too just put in black pill or get laid or some shit like that on my channel and there's like video audio recordings with this guy I've shared uh, this guy's entire testimonial too, uh, where he's like, yo, let's go. I just talked, I just spoke to the first girl that I ever spoke to or something. Same thing. When you don't make the effort, you're going to hate everything. You're going to hate life. You're going to hate girls. You're going to hate, um, I don't know, the sexual market value, blah, blah, blah. You're going to hate everything. But when you start taking action and you just start doing better than what you were doing before, you start loving yourself. You don't even care about everything else. You just start loving yourself. That's it. This whole thing about 
Um, you, okay, so you just need to be the best version of you, right? Th then we came to God hates the lazy. So that's where that thing comes in. God hates the lazy is if you have just accepted defeat and that's it. If you stopped, if you've accepted defeat and you stopped, yes, God hates the lazy, which means that you hate yourself, right? But if you don't stop and you don't quit and you give yourself the best possible option or the best possible chance, then there's no way, if you know that you've done everything that's within your power, there's no failing then, right? The failing is only if you truly give up and you don't even try. But if you know that you're giving yourself your entire all, then there's no failing then. So God hates the lazy thing, right? Here's a really good, simple example that I want you to go through, like a simple visualization exercise or just an exercise or introspection exercise, right? You live in your own world. Now, I've mentioned this thing with the whole matrix video that I made recently in the past. Again, if you want to check it out, just Google for matrix on my YouTube channel. I want you to think about the matrix thing, but now we're going to add in the entity of God or the devil or whatever else you might want to add to it. Right? <clears throat> so let's just say the whole world is fake. The entire world is fake. I am fake. Everything else is fake. Like you are the only real entity or thing in the world. Right? And you want to get the best physique that you will possibly want to get. And you want to get the girls that you want to get. Right? Now, God has put things into this matrix. He's put girls out there and he's there's the ability for you to get, your body has been made in such a way that you can definitely get to a six pack uh, and you can get bigger arms and you can get shredded and all that kind of stuff. You can lose the 50, 100 pounds or something, right? God has made and put these girls out there in the matrix and he's given your results to be achievable or something out in the matrix. So you are wherever you are, let's just, let's just say this is right. This is where you start off. This is where you are and this is where the results are, right? Now, whether it's God or the devil or whoever else you might want to think, He's put this stuff out there for you, but your job is to make it there, right? And the very first, I'm just going to like the very first thing, let's say like the very first thing in terms of, let's say trying to get to girls would be, let's say, I think we'll be approach anxiety or something, right? Like maybe, maybe that would be the first thing. How do I get over approach anxiety, right? That would be the first thing. So if you stop, if you don't, if you're like, no, I'm never going to get over approach anxiety. I don't want to do it. Boom. You fail right there. Like you literally fail before you even start. You literally fail right there, Right. Now let's say you start off with, okay, I want to get over approach anxiety and you go out there and you talk to one or two girls uh, and you feel like your heart's beating out of your fucking chest and you're going to vomit and throw up or some shit. And then you're like, holy shit, that was really scary. Really? How do I do this? What do I do next? I don't want to feel the same thing again. So, okay. So now we're going to go back home, right? We're now we're going to go back home and now we're going to come up with breathing exercises. Okay. How, okay. I'm going to put like my hand on my belly and I'm going to be like, I'm going to have my belly come out all the way so that I understand sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system. I understand how to like control myself and calm myself. And then I'm going to go out and do it again. So the next time I go, next time I go out, I do the exact same thing again. This time I've gotten over a little bit of the approach anxiety. Okay. Um, my tongue gets, okay. So let's say you get from here to here. Now you're getting a little bit over approach anxiety. And okay. I don't know what to talk about. And my tongue gets tied. So I don't really know what to do. Okay. So now I realized when I'm here, and you're going to do this experiment, by the way, like one, if I talk to only one to three girls, my tongue is going to be tied or one to three people, my tongue is going to be tied. OK, so the next step and you come back and you ask me or you ask on the Internet or somewhere else and they tell you, OK, dude, one to three is really less because you're only talking to one to three people per day. It's like warming up and lubricating your tongue. All you want to do is you want to go out and make more of an effort. Talk to five people, talk to 10 people, talk to 10 people in the in a grocery store or anywhere before you go and make your first approach. Just lubricate your tongue before you go out. So that's the next thing that you understood. So then you move from here to here. Okay, I'm doing well. So whatever the next thing is, do you understand? Like the, you can make the same thing for dieting. I don't know what it would be. You start off on a diet. You did, let's say, you didn't even do anything. You just did uh, cardio for the first time ever. You lost a little bit of weight and you came back and then you gained like uh, 15 pounds when you first lost 10 pounds because you did it the wrong way. Now, did you quit forever because I have bad genetics? It's over. Right. But if you went back to the drawing board and like, dude, I lost 10 pounds and I gained 12. Like, what the fuck happened? And you go out and you you find out and it's like, oh, shit, I didn't lose uh, fat. I actually lost muscle because I didn't weight train. OK, cool. So now I got to weight train. So you go in there and you do some bullshit and you try it for three months and nothing happens because you you just start picking up a dumbbell and putting it down is going to be weight training. There's a difference between working out and training. Right. So now you understand, OK, why am I not making results? You make another post online. You ask me, you ask somebody else. And somebody tells you, bro, what the fuck is your programming? Are you doing something? What, what, what's your programming like? What's your, what is programming? Okay, let's sit down. Let's do this thing. Okay, this is what programming is. So then you get the programming. Okay, then you do this. Then you do this. Like your six pack, your hundred pound loss, whatever it is, is here. You're getting the girls is here. Your job is to make it from here to here, right? God is, if you believe in a God or whoever you believe in or something, your higher consciousness, whatever it is might be. 
is already they've already put these things out there in the world for you to get but it's your job to not quit on yourself and to keep making it from here to here to here to here dude do you know how much of a struggle it is for me to do all the stuff that i do do you know how complicated everything is that i, that I do i'm currently doing a youtube um course i'm trying to do like an instagram course i'm trying to like work on my entire instagram marketing page i'm doing like a vsl this thing i'm I'm throwing as much money as I possibly have also on top of all the time that I have. And I'm trying to learn every single thing to get as, be as because I don't know what, what's going to work and what's not going to work. I have no idea. What I do know is what didn't work. That's the only thing I know is like, I didn't, it didn't work. Check out my Instagram, right? My, my Instagram delete, my previous one got deleted, but right now um, I have real editors that are, in my opinion, making really, really good reels, but I'm still not getting enough traction and it gets fucking frustrating and I can quit. But I asked those guys on the internet and they're, they're coming up with, oh, you're brown and your niche is stupid and this is this. And I spoke to my mentor and he's like, okay, what do you want to come up with? It's like really high quality videos, uh, really high HD videos that, that are done only for Instagram. And you want to come up with um, really, really catchy hooks. Like that's what you want to come up with. So that's the next thing I'm going to try out. Like I'm somewhere around here or something with, with the whole instagram game and the social media game or something like that and i can tell you so many times that i have to push myself i have to push myself to make this video right because i'm making this video and i still don't know if anybody's gonna watch this and worse if somebody's if, if they're gonna watch it but they're just completely going to negate it they're not gonna watch they're not gonna get anything out of it or they're just gonna poo poo it or something else so like all my time that i'm investing in this is gonna is it gonna go completely waste but you don't know. All I know is that I can just make the best effort that I can make, right? If like a thousand people watch it and three people do something, fucking fantastic, right? If a thousand people watch it and nobody does something, I could still only do the best that I could do. I could just make the best content that I could make about the best stuff and the best raw materials and showing the best images and the visualization and the pictures and everything to give you the best idea. That's the only thing that I can do. Right. That's the only thing I can do. The rest is not in my control. If you want to get girls, bro, you have to go out and start talking to them and do the best that you can do. You can't change that you're five, seven or five, four. You can't change if you're brown or black or you can't change any of these things. I can't change that. I'm an Indian skinny ectomorphic and I'm never going to be Mr. Olympia because I can still be the best goddamn physique that I can possibly be. Right. That requires eating properly, training properly, all that kind of stuff and not fucking around and not drinking and not dopamine binging and all that kind of stuff. All we can really do is get the best results that we can possibly get. So, so, okay, here's another example. <clears throat> I actually wanted, I forgot about that completely. So you live in your own world, right? Let's say you make it somewhere, right? Now let's take the example of the Mo guy or let's say myself even or something, right? So this Mo dude, um, he's getting the results and then, um, and then he sees some other black dude getting better results, right? So he's getting some results or whatever it is, he's doing something. And he sees some black dude getting better results and he's like, dude, fuck it. I don't want to do it anymore because this guy, I'm making so much effort and, and I'm getting only this much and that guy's making this much effort and he's getting that much, right? Now, understand what I said. The matrix, uh, well, I don't know how to explain this. I, let, oh, I think it's, it's a matrix, right? So everything is fake. Everything is unreal. What I want you to think is like, this is all a simulation or something and God literally has put up like a fake person or a fake thing, some black dude or I don't know who's some alpha chat guy or some shit that we can have an example of. Uh, Andrew Tate, dude. Andrew Tate. Uh, somebody put like some, uh, God put up this Andrew Tate dude who has and gets anything and everything that he wants. Now, you could use that as maybe some kind of inspiration uh, if you can, or you could just use it for demotivation because dude, that guy's, me and you and nobody else is ever going to get the life that uh, Andrew Tate's going to get, no matter how hard we try from here on out, right? Like in every single metric and every single thing that he's doing. So we could use that as something to get demotivated and just give up. Or we could just be like, well, it doesn't really matter. I had this before. I have this now. These are really good. And I want to keep on doing the best that I can possibly do and I can keep on going forward, right? So all of these distractions, like the dudes that you're watching on Instagram that keep getting results like compared to you like faster like this, all these people that are demotivating you, that are you are letting them demotivate you, all of these people are all fake people that exist in the matrix only as a test from God, whether can you make it or can you not make it? Like, is this how much you love yourself or is this how much you trust yourself? Is this how hard you're going to try for yourself? Like, I don't, again, did God give you life? Science gave you life? Whatever, the, again, whatever the thing is, right? You get, you have life right now. Your consciousness has life right now. Is this the best and the hardest that you're going to try for yourself that you may even be getting results or results might come in like 25 more steps or like a year from now, but you're going to quit because that person's getting them right now. Like, is that it? So Again, if you believe in this God thing or something, all he's trying to do is like test you the entire way or something, right? That's it. And our job is to not fail. 
So again, understand you live in your own world. Like these people don't even really actually exist. So don't even go for that shit. Like these people don't even actually really exist. They're just like an idea, whether you and an attest from God or whoever or whatever. Like, can you see it and keep making it forward and not get demotivated? Or is that something that you're going to stop yourself from getting the best that you can possibly get? So you don't hate the world. Even though all of these things and all of these guys that I'm talking about, right? Like we don't actually hate them because there was hate in this video and um, like, I don't know if these guys hated the, the world or something, but they were definitely disappointed with the world, right? So maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I know I for sure, for sure did. Um, yeah, but the point is you don't actually hate the world. The truth of the matter is you just hate yourself. And I know that this may possibly be really hard to believe or, or, or understand or hear. And that's what I said. This might actually be really hard to hear. But this is even for my own self. Um, which is why I'm actually making this video. You cannot hate the world or something or something when you know that you've done 100% of every single thing that you've possibly done to get the results that you possibly can. There is no doubt that the world is unfair. But like I said before, the world is fake. So is it really because you, you, you understand what I'm trying to say? Like if the world is fake, these are just things that you see in a simulation or something. That's not even like the real thing. I kind of want you to think like if you click your fingers and there's nothing else that exists or something, right? So like you didn't have something before and you have something now. That should be that should be more than enough for you to be happy. But if you didn't have something before and you have something now, but you see that guy has 10 or 10 times of what you have, then that fucking happiness goes away, right? So, but it's all fake though. It's all fake is what I'm trying to explain to you. So now here's the thing. It's possible to many of you that to, oh, it's possible to many of you may be too spiritually immature and young to even realize this. And I completely agree with this and I complete, I definitely, definitely think so. Which is why I actually said if these things are actually clicking to you or clicking in your head, then please put down pen to paper or something and then take it with you and keep introspecting on it for like a day, maybe three days, maybe five days, maybe seven days. Because even very, very, one of the major reasons why I'm making this video, very, very recently I spoke to somebody about something where he just made me realize that the way that I'm thinking about a certain object or I am giving my 60% to something to get 80% to 90% of the best results that I can possibly get. Because in my head, I'm saying that if I make 100% of my efforts, my 100% will not be equal to the world's best 100%. So then what is what even is the point? And um, so he made me question that thing. And and it like when I immediately answered it or I, I heard it or something, my thought process still made more sense to me. Like, you know, no, it makes more sense because I kind of identify with the Steve Jobs is lazy guy where Steve Jobs is lazy guy is you ask a lazy guy to do something and he will do the easiest, fastest, most efficient method of doing or getting the result because he's fucking lazy. But if you ask a hardworking guy to do something, he's going to end up finding the hardest methods of doing something. So I've always found that to be really smart, except, except when things really, really matter to you in life or something, you need to give them your all because we've on, we've only been given this one chance, right? The whole YOLO thing. We've only been given this one chance. We've only been given this one life or something. And it's our purpose and it's our duty to do the best that we possibly can. Nobody knows if you're going to make money. Nobody knows if you're going to become an IFBB pro. Nobody knows if you're going to become blah, 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 nothing. Like nobody knows if you're going to get a hundred girls or a thousand girls or 25 girls or whatever the fuck it, whatever the thing might be. Nobody knows about any of that shit. But what we do know about is that if you don't try and you don't give it your best, your conscience is always going to keep on eating you up. That's why I put this in here. You just hate yourself. is like that, that feeling of every day waking up with anxiety, every day waking up purposelessness, every day waking up feeling like a disappointment. Where is that coming from? It's, it's coming, it's coming from somewhere, right? Like it's not just a chemical something in your brain. Where's that actually coming from? So, and when I say you don't hate the world, because most of these, most of these people, including myself, even also hate the world and go into like the whole sexual market value and this thing and that thing and black chat, wrote, black chat, Tyrone, and this, this, whatever all the other things are, right? So, but we don't actually genuinely hate the world. So one of the things I wanted to give you about the whole bodybuilding thing, I don't know if you guys have ever heard about this or, or, uh, seen this or not. <clears throat> this one. I actually had a, what was the thing? I actually had a, a reel about this too. Oh my God, dude. No man has the right to be an amateur in the matter of physical training. It is a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable. 
I actually had this on my Facebook since 2008 with the first time that I ever started lifting weights. And when I first ever started lifting weights, I didn't really want to be IFBB or pro or Mr. Olympia or really anything. I didn't want to be any of these things. Um, and I didn't really care much. And I, there wasn't an Instagram back then or something. So there was like, there wasn't a competitive thing or anything. So the reason why I'm breaking this thing up is this doesn't say you have to be better than X person or better than Y person or the best at this thing or the best at that thing or the best at that thing. It doesn't say that. What it says is no man has a right to be an amateur in the matter of physical training. It's a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable of. Now, you could change the thing from an amateur in the matter of physical training, no matter of socializing or whatever else. But I, I love bodybuilding. So let's just use that. It's a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable of. You have your own physique and your own body. And it's the only thing your body is going to look the most beautiful version of itself when you get down to 10%, 12%, 6%, whatever the heck thing might be for you, right? But you need to get down there. And your best version and beauty of your body is just going to be yours. It's not going to be in comparison to Nick Walker or the Trent Twins or blah, 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 whoever else it is. It's just going to be in comparison to you. So not doing that and not taking the best steps and not giving yourself the best possible chance, not doing any of these things are the things that are making you eat yourself up alive on the inside. I want to give you another example of this guy, <clears throat> the pizza story, right? Where this came up from. So the pizza story, I recently had a, a client sign up with me and uh, this dude hopped on TRT to lose fat, which is utterly pointless. And he was also doing another couple of cycles, maybe primo or something else. And then he was also uh, taking like 50 milligrams of DMP or something like that to test it out. And when he wanted to test out DMP, the way he was testing it out was by not training, not doing cardio and eating two slices of pizza instead of four slices of pizza while he had a salad waiting for him in the background, right? That's his method of giving himself his best shot. So, and he, we were talking about how his mood is off and he doesn't really believe in himself and everything else. And I kind of pointed it out a little bit, bro. You're not even giving yourself the best fucking chance. Like, don't you think these are the things that are eating you up alive on the inside, right? So, so he didn't like to hear that shit. That's where the pizza story kind of comes in. It's like you're not even giving yourself the best chance. So you cannot blame that you have bad genetics or you have endomorph genetics or or blah, 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 blah. Or, you know, your drugs aren't working or your drugs are fake or some shit like that. It's like you're not even giving yourself the best fucking chance to do it. Right. Let's say your best chance to get down to the lowest that you could possibly get to is only 14 percent because you have horrible genetics or some shit. And you can only get down to 14, 15 percent. But this motherfucker is at 35 percent. So why are you still eating pizza, bro? Why are you still eating pizza? Because don't you think eating salad instead of pizza will get you down to 14% as opposed to 34, 35% or even like your best otherwise of 22%? So you're not even giving yourself the best chance. If you don't give yourself the best chance, your conscience knows that you're lying to yourself. You're not giving yourself the best, best shot in life. Um, so that's one thing. So this is this image was like fucking brilliant. I remember I don't remember where I found this or something in the past, but you can see there's this lady that literally in a field of roses. And she's unhappy. And on the other side of the fence, there's this other woman that doesn't have anything and has one flower and she's happy. And this is, again, the same thing. It goes back to all of these things. It's all about, I, I kind of want to go back into the Mo thing. It's like, this dude is already getting results and he's doing really well. And he's still comparing to the black Chad Tyrone and this and that. And he's like cutting himself off. And this black pill insult dude wasn't getting any results. Or, no, 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 no. What am I saying? This dude was actually getting results online on Tinder. And, um, and I never got any results online on Tinder. And this guy was, uh, getting like really good. It was like 150 matches, 160 matches in like the past month or some shit like that. And I'm like, dude, you're crushing it more than I am. What the fuck are you talking about? But he's like, yeah, but these aren't good looking girls and they're unattractive. And all the, all the good looking girls are going to the chat and Tyrone and some shit like that. I'm like, dude, you're getting some girls, but you could be as bad. Your Tinder could be as, as bad as mine. You could be getting fucking no girls. Right. Like I had to do it the hard way by going out and actually doing cold approach. Like you're actually getting girls already. So it's it's one of the it's literally that flower thing. It's literally a matter of perspective because you want this thing that you think is going to be. The, you need to be the best in the world for some weird reason. Like, I don't know why people have have, have their happiness locked to being the best possible results in the world. Like anything under the best is not good enough or something. Um, basically, OK, so <clears throat> this is actually a question from or something that came up from my discord call, right? Um, so basically you online data and then did a video. Okay. So this guy said, you seem pretty disappointed, which makes sense since we are constantly complaining about not getting what we want while taking no steps towards it. 
um and i said disappointed 10 to 20 percent because i'm showing you the guys sh i'm showing you guys the way already frustrated 80 to 90 percent because i don't know what else to do i don't know what else to do to reach and drive the point home any further like i really don't know i'm literally taking logs of game logs of me going out there and taking the approaches and taking the hits i've even done infield audios of me actually talking to girls um i've shown you so many text messages i'm actually making videos about getting the lays finally after when initially we started off by not even talking to being able to talk to girls or some shit i'm literally showing you everything before and after and people are still not taking action so i'm frustrated because i don't know how, how you know the mexican uh the um, the cartman thing how do i reach these kids it's like that thing that's what's happening to me it's like how do i reach these kids how do i reach these kids <laughs> oh sorry how do I reach these kids? 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 This is what it feels like. How do I reach these kids? Kids! I reach these kids. Oh god. I reach these kids. Oh my god. But yeah, <clears throat> so anyway, so that's where that comes from. It's like, I'm already telling you guys. So anyways, he's right. It's just, we need more confidence. And and then after that, I sent him the other video, the other video that I have, how to build confidence, core confidence and self-esteem or some shit like that. Um, because everything that you're asking me, I've been through every single one of these things. I'm solving every single one of these things. I'm giving you guides to every single one of these things too. Dude, I'm 34, 35 years old. These guys are only 21, 19, 20 three maybe some shit like that <clears throat> and everybody's like behaving as if life is over or the world is over or some shit and i only started working on my life at the age of 28 29 or some shit so i don't understand where the stuff is coming from and i'm giving you guides ready ready made done for you guides and everything and you guys are still not taking action so okay <clears throat> so this is the other thing right now you're in this state or something right and i think where was the other thing you just hate yourself right like you wake up every day and you're frustrated and you're frustrated about the world and why does the sexual market value be like this? Why don't I have good enough genetics? Why don't I have genetics like Sam Sulek and blah, 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 right? So should I just kill myself? Right? So that's the next question. Like, should I just kill myself? You're here because you know that that's not the answer. Like, you know that's not the answer because otherwise you wouldn't be here. And by, when I say wouldn't be here, you would definitely not be on my YouTube channel watching this video. And you definitely wouldn't be even be here on this planet anymore. Uh, on this planet if you didn't think there was another way or another option or something like that. So you know that that's not the answer, right? So you know that's not the answer. Now, when I uh, was doing the Black Bell Incel call, I remember this. I actually cut this part out of the video because somebody told me to cut it out or something. But this dude just came up with this stuff too. He'd broken up with his girlfriend and he was mad about not getting enough results in the gym and... He wanted to do these steroids and drugs and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And I was helping him out with everything, right? And then he was like, um, I don't know what he said. So because he was like so fucking defeatist and everything, you guys have to watch that video. Watch that video. It'll change your life. So he kept, so he kept on complaining in that video. And I was like, okay, dude, what is the option here? Do you want to kill yourself? Like, what's the option here? Like, because he was, he was shutting down everything that I was giving him. What is the option? Do you want to kill yourself? He's like, I don't know, man, maybe. So I was like, okay, dude. And I gave him the exact same advice. That Andrew Tate actually gave uh, someone. Where'd he go? So I gave him the exact same advice that Andrew Tate gave someone. I was like, okay, if you really think you want to kill yourself, why don't you just put down a fucking date six months from now? And from this point onwards, until the next six months, I want you to never complain ever again. You are not allowed to complain about anything ever again. All you're allowed to do is work. All you're allowed to do is put in the effort and make the fucking thing happen. Because God forbid, if nothing happens for you in your life, you don't get any results, nothing is happening to you. You already uh, decided to yourself that you're going to end yourself in six months, right? Well, for the next six months, you do not get to fucking complain. I don't want to hear a single fucking other uh, complaint out of your mouth or something. Anything you want to ask, okay, what happened to my training plateau, this, that, what do I do next? That's fine. But I don't want to hear a single other fucking complaint. It's the exact same thing that this guy said. He's like, just get a six pack, right? So he's like, you want to kill yourself, right? This some dude asked Tate and he was like, Yo, you want to kill yourself, right? How about this? Just get a six pack first. Just get a six pack first. And then you can think about contemplating about ki killing yourself and suicide and shit. Right? So as soon as that guy started working towards getting a six pack, his entire life changed. His entire life changed. So just pick a thing and then start working towards it and don't complain for the next six months. And honestly, you know, what's the most important thing for you in your life? 
it's not to make money and it's not even really to get girls even though all these things are important too the number one thing for anybody in this life honest to god i'm being fucking serious about this the number one thing that's going to change your life is get a six pack because getting a six pack requires so much holistic effort 24/7 365 that you cannot quit and you can't fucking bitch out and you have to keep working towards yourself the entire time no matter how stressful or something it might feel you have to work towards it the entire time by the time you finally reach a six pack six months eight months 12 months down the line or some shit you're gonna feel fucking amazing you're gonna feel like dude i am capable of absolutely everything i know every single because this is what happened to me on, on my prep when i reached this shape on my prep i there were days that i was like nine percent body fat i was waking up 8 a.m in the morning going and training my clients coming back, trying to eat some food, coming back, recording some videos, editing the videos, putting them online. Um, and then at 10 p.m. at night, I realize I don't have a salad and I drive out at 10 p.m. to go to fucking Walmart or Sobeys because both of these places will close by 11 p.m. to get a fucking fruit salad or pear or some shit or spinach or some shit because I had to stick to my diet because I had a certain goal and a certain game plan. I wasn't complaining. Oh, I have shit genetics. So why should I even try? Because what if I don't eat this? Like, it's okay. I'm never going to be Mr. Olympia anyways. Okay. I have shit genetics. or you know, There was nothing of that stuff. There was no complaints. Just pick a fucking goal. And your number one goal that will change your fucking life is going to be to get a six pack. Just get in the best shape. Everything else, including money and women and this and that. And on, most importantly, your mental health. Most importantly, the voice in your head is going to get calmed down. Just get a six pack first and everything else is going to take care of itself. Um, so it's a six pack thing. <clears throat> so I, I don't know why I have this thing. I guess I do. But so th this is a black pill and cell video that I made. It's okay if you can't read it. But when I posted that black pill and cell video thing, I had a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six people or any, a couple more in the comments too. Every single one was talking about the exact same stuff. Every single one was hating and every single one, ironically, had the exact same likes on each person's 10, 10 likes, eight likes, nine likes, eight likes. They had the exact same likes on every single one. So every single person posted at the exact same time, 12 hours ago, every single comment was negative and everybody had the exact same likes. It's because they were like targeting hatred or something. And it's the same thing. I told you this, right? Because this is this. Because people don't like to be called out. Because these people did not like to be called out. So if you if you hate yourself and, you know, obviously you get into these fucking cesspools and all that kind of stuff, nobody likes being called out. That's why I'm saying. If this thing hurts you, that's okay. That Maybe this is what you need. Maybe I might be completely and entirely false and I'm completely off point. Maybe, you know, I may be completely lost. But what, if this thing actually triggers you or something, just sit down with it and just be just just intro, introspect on it for like a couple of days, maybe up to a week or something. Okay, finally, <clears throat> you can change and learn at any age. This I, I'm choosing a female black client that's 47 years old, not one of my other jacked young bros and not my own pictures or something else, because I want to show you like an exception to the rule, because all of us are young guys, 15, 18 to 34 or some shit like that. Are we trying to get jacked and some shit like I want to show you like an exceptional person who you think is much older than you would have had everything sorted out. She's already a mom, uh, already works, this has everything else sorted out in her life, right? Before she came to me, she was incredibly fucking depressed and incredibly out of shape. Uh, and she'd completely lost herself because she was in great shape before and then she completely let herself go and she wanted to come to me to use like a certain supplement or something to help her get to where she wanted to get. And we ended up never using that supplement and naturally this is like the first week to two weeks or some shit like that. So yesterday reflecting about where I am mentally, emotionally and physically. I'm learning triggers or actions that compound whatever state I'm in, positive or negative. Life for me right now is just really, really positive. I'm drawing to all the things uplifting and motivating, etc. If I notice a single negativity thought trying to creep in into my mind, then I just don't give it any place. If I've been finding the positive in everything I'm doing these days, it's so liberating. Such a happy state of life. I have clips coming out. Okay. I'm not even having sex, which is usually a reason for me to be in such an awesome mood. So much bigger than that. So yeah, so that's that. And like I mentioned here, we only just started off. So this was literally just us starting off, not even anywhere deep in our journey or some shit. So you can change and learn at any age. And I, I know this because some of you guys are going like, oh, I'm 21 years old. Oh, I'm 19 years old. I'm 23 years old. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I haven't done this thing yet. Dude, I didn't even start off executing like a fucking motherfucker until the age of 28, 29 or some shit. So you're so fucking early. Um, oh, this is the example I wanted to give you about bad genetics because a lot of people come up with bad genetics, right? Like because your genetics, this, I think that's what the video is going to be. Your genetics are not what's holding you back. 
these are bad genetics, right? Bad genetics. Dude, this was me trying to flex so fucking hard after going to the gym for like a week uh, and actually doing arms and all that shit. This is me trying to flex that fucking hard. This is me about two years ago, two and a half, three years ago, something like that. I'm currently way bigger than this. This dude came to me at the age of 15 years old. Like, how good do you think this guy's genetics look? This dude, this dude looks like the machinist or something in the, uh, like Patrick Bateman, the, machi in the machinist movie, right? That's how this guy looks. Look at how he looks on the right side. This dude legit looks like a fucking miniature version of Superman. We've put on 70 something pounds on this kid. This kid is now deadlifting. Um, I think he's, I know he's definitely above three plates. I think he's like three and a half. I'm not sure. Uh, and he's, uh, 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 leg pressing six plates, right? The same dude. Can you, can you imagine this kid is leg pressing six plates? Like you can, but the guy completely changed this guy, an Indian guy, doctor, uh, back home, you know, man boobs and like completely out of shape. Look at the way that he's looking. Look at his face. Look at how fucking insane he looks here. Look at how well his stomach is moved in. Look at how his pecs are completely separated. Look at how his triceps are coming out. Do you think this man is not proud of the way that he fucking looks? Do you think that he looks fucking small? Like, do you think like he's ashamed of making this, of putting this picture up there? Dude, you, the, the whole so so uh, Socrates thing once again, you only have your one physique and one your body. And it's a shame for you to go to your grave without, not, without seeing the true beauty of what your body is actually capable of. Socrates doesn't care. God doesn't care. Nobody else cares if you look like this and Ronnie Coleman looks like the way that he looks. The only thing that God or any of these people really care about is did you put in 100% of the effort that you were supposed to be putting in to get the best possible chance that you could get in life? That's what they fucking care about. Uh, another natty client of mine is like about eight weeks worth of work or something like that. Eight weeks completely natty client. They didn't use anything. Look at how well his pecs are uh, shaping. Look at how clean his stomach moved in. These are all bad genetics. This, by the way, in the first week of us working together, this man hit the lowest body weight that he's ever hit in this past year. In the first week of us working together. I've never shared this testimonial before, but so anyways, um, that's the end of my TED talk. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, help me out with the like, comment, share, subscribe, so on and so forth with the YouTube algorithm. My calendar link is in the, in the description below. If you guys are looking to get the best, fastest Jack transformations, or you're looking to get over your social anxiety and actually talk to the girls that you find attractive in life, then Hop into my calendar link, sign up for a coaching call, and we'll go from there. I love you all, man. I'm really sorry if this was like a little bit hard for you to... I'm actually not sorry, but if this was a little hard for you to listen, then maybe, again, introspect a little bit about this because this might have been exactly what you need. And again, the only reason why I'm saying this is because this is exactly what I needed. I needed exactly this thing. And somebody else just reminded me of this exact same thing, like maybe four or five days ago or something. Again, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. I love you all.